Hello, my name is Israel Morales and this is my story. Thank you, first of all, for giving us your time and uh, letting us in a little bit on, on uh, Israel and what's Israel all about, most importantly. Definitely. What, what's your story and, what, and where does it begin? Well, the reason I, I really wanted to share this story is because it's, it's, well, one, it's my story and it's something that I've never really uh, shared with anyone. And uh, being that uh, my partner and I, Fidel, on a How We Talk podcast, um, the subject of depression and suicide has, has come up a lot. And uh, this month is uh, Suicide Prevention Awareness month so and it's something that we did talk about on our recent uh, release so it got me thinking that um, I've shared my story maybe once and it wasn't the full thing and it's something that I want to share and get it out there um, and just get get my story across to people so um, I guess it would begin way back I would say 10 years let's 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 go with 10 years um i was young and i got married i got married at a young age um mentally maybe i wasn't ready or maybe it wasn't a fit um but i still had the the mindset of a young person i still wanted to party um i was heavily into drinking i was heavily into drugs um and it was something that I hid. Whether I hid it and I was doing a good job of it or not, it's something that I hid from my family. Whether or not they knew, which I think maybe they had an idea, um, but it was a it was a down down roll downward spiral for me, big time. Um, I was heavy, heavy, heavy into drinking anything that someone put in front of me, I drank it. Um, drugs, I've, I had just the wrong people, the wrong influences in my life, um, saying, hey, snort this, smoke that, shoot this, you know? Um, and it took over. It took over my life, it took over my decision making, it took over me trying to be a, a husband. Um, this is all prior to my son, you know? So the, the thought of having children was not even in my mind, you know? Um, it was just, when, can, when do I get paid? When do I go back out? Uh, when do I get a party again? You know, when do I get that high? When do I get that fix? Um, yeah, it was, it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Um, I did a lot of, uh, it, it led to a lot of seeking, seeking out different forms of pleasure. I, in my head, I realized quickly that I got married too young. I didn't want to get married, or at least I thought I didn't. I just wanted to, this was more pleasurable to me to be out in the nightlife and doing drugs. That was more fun. So doing that was, was my priority. You know, I, I worked, I worked uh, long hours and then I got my check and then I blew it, you know, and then I wasn't taking my marriage serious or whatnot. And uh, everything came crashing down. You know, I did, um, it led to cheating. It led to just sleepless nights, sleepless nights of one being up on drugs and then, uh, days of just sleeping from being too hungover to function the next day, you know? And a lot of it was um, 
a lot of it was hidden from my family. Um, and, and my wife at the time, maybe she thought it was her role to be that wife and try to be there for me and not say anything. Um, and whether she did or not, I don't know to this day, but uh, if she kept it into herself, it, it's something that just bursted and all came out one day, you know? Um, I got, I ended up getting a, um, a divorce shortly after my son was born. Um, and I thought, oh, I thought this is what I wanted. I thought, yeah, this, this is what I want. I, I need to be alone. I need, I don't need to be tied down. Um, I'm still going to work. I, I got a great job, you know, and, and way after that, that's when the crumbling came, you know, it was, um, I ended up losing my job on top of, um, losing my wife. I ended up losing, uh, my cars. We had two cars. We lost them. I lost my place. I had to move back with my parents. Um, and it was just one thing after another, one thing after another, and uh, I ended up being at my parents and just jobless. I couldn't find a decent job. It was small, you know, under the table cash jobs. Um, and life got life got real heavy. I wasn't being the father that I was supposed to be, and I was trying to be. That's why I was trying to get these anything I could get to to pay for diapers, uh, clothes, stuff like that, you know, and uh, just trying to make ends meet while trying to figure out my, my own life and trying to figure out what's next for me in, in, in this world, you know? And uh, I remember when, when, when people say, oh, I hit rock bottom. I hit rock bottom. And I never knew what that was until I hit rock bottom, you know? And, uh, I had been uh, in my room just thinking about everything, thinking about everything and weighing in heavy, heavy, just this depression just started setting in really bad. And uh, it was like, I'm, I'm this old, I'm, I'm back at home, you know, I have a, a son and, and I don't have a family and I have to provide, like I, I became what I never ever wanted to become you know, and, uh, the thought of, the thought of, uh, when I was, when I was depressed, when I was going through this depression, even the thought of my son couldn't overcome it. So it was, it was real, it was scary to think that the thoughts of killing myself and how to do it do I do drugs or do I do I overdose? Do I uh, take a gun? Do you know? Do I shoot myself? Do I hang myself? All these thoughts keep going through my head. Who am I gonna hurt? Who am I gonna? Who am I gonna leave behind? What kind of debt am I gonna leave behind? Will they get over it? Will Will they remember me? Will they forget me in a few years? All these things went through my head. You know. And, uh, you know, uh, if I may, you said during the time that you were depressed, the suicidal thoughts came into your mind. At what point did those suicide thoughts come into your mind? Because depression is one thing. Right. When did suicide get introduced? Suicide was introduced. It just going to sound like a dumb statement, but on the last day. Um, what I thought was to be the last day. I've never thought, I've never thought to um, commit that act. It was, I was always, I was raised as a Christian, so it was, um, it was taught to us that you can commit this sin or all these sins, but if you commit suicide, you're not uh, granted into the kingdom of heaven, right? Um, so that thought alone scared me. What scared me even more was the fact that 
I wanted to do it and that nothing scared me to do it, you know? Um, and I remember the day. I remember the day like it was yesterday. It was, I, in my head, I'm like, this is it. I'm, I'm done. I lost everything. I lost everything. I don't have $5 to my name. I don't have my son. I don't have my marriage. I don't have my job. I'm living at home. I'm a loser. That was in my head. I had on a tank top and some army camo shorts and some sandals. And I I thought, okay, how am I going to do this? And uh, so I had a gun. And I put that gun in my backpack. And I, I put that gun in my backpack and I said, all right, this is it. I'm going to just go. I'm going to go to the park. I'm going to go to the park and I'm going to just do it there. And I remember, I remember my brother Jacob was there. And uh, my mom was outside. My mom was outside, she was watering, and uh, I just, I stepped outside the house, and I got nervous because she was outside. I didn't expect her to be out there. And I just took off walking really fast. And she said, Mijo, where are you going? And she knew, she had seen that I had been crying. And uh, I didn't say anything. And I just left. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry. She dropped the hose. I looked back and she dropped the hose and she ran inside. And she yelled for my brother. She yelled for my brother and said, Jacob, go get your brother. Go get your brother. There's something wrong. And I heard that. And I ran. And I ran. And my brother, I remember running to um, Del Norte Park here in West Covina. And I remember constantly looking back, turning back and looking and looking to see where my brother's at because I knew he was going to come and find me. And I saw his car. I saw his car coming down the street and I ducked down behind a car and I remember him just driving real slow, looking out and shouting my name. I didn't think about things till after that as an older brother, he is my keeper. And I dodged him. I dodged him. And uh, he eventually stopped looking for me. I sat in the same spot for about 20 minutes until he gave up. And I continued walking. I ended up walking in the other direction because I knew he was in that direction. And uh, I ended up walking down, I believe it's San Bernardino by the 7-Eleven, is that San Bernardino, Badillo? And uh, I was crying, I was just crying and crying. I couldn't stop crying because I knew I started thinking of everything I'm going to leave behind. And I, I knew that I was going to do it. That's how real it was. And uh, I said, I'm going to go over here to this school because I know there's an entrance in the schoolyard. And I can go do it out in the field. And I was walking. And I walked past this church. And uh, I'd never been in this church ever. And uh, I saw the lights on and a bunch of cars in the parking lot. I'm like, what? Why is there always people here? You know, it felt like there was always people here. 
And uh, it was the first time that I called out. It was the first time I called out to God. Because I was always afraid. I was raised a Christian. And I knew what I was taught. And I knew what, what was right from wrong in my beliefs. And uh, I, I was afraid to ever talk to God. Because I was afraid that he could, if I talked to him, he would know my failures. <laughs> Little did I know, he always knew. Uh, but at this moment, uh, I had stopped walking. And I just stood there staring across the street. Staring at the church, just wondering what was going on in there, you know. And, uh, and I just looked up. I looked up, I said, God, if you're real, I need a sign. And I need it now. Otherwise, I'm going to continue on to what I was going to do. And in that split second, in that split second, and when I remember this happening, it couldn't have been more in a slow motion, dramatic scene. This, this van, it was a burgundy astro van. It was driving down the street. The muffler was shot because I remember hearing the pr -pr -pr, and two people were arguing inside and I don't know what they're arguing about but they passed me as I was looking at this church and uh, all I heard all I heard was just go just go just like that clear as day and I said all right that was it that was my sign I walked across the street um, not knowing if I was even invited to go into this building or not, but I walked into this uh, church. I walked in and it was empty. The lights were on. It was empty. There was TVs on. I walk in and I walk in further and further. I'm like, what am I doing here? This is, there's no one here. There's no one here. And uh, I'm looking at this TV and it has a list of classes I guess that the church was having that day and uh, nobody was there so I didn't know what to do I didn't know where to go I didn't know where I could go so I started walking away and uh, a man a man turned the corner and he was on his phone his name is Danny Tienda I'll never forget this guy Short dude, Hispanic, long ponytail, kind of uh, old school veterano type. And uh, I looked back and he saw that I had been crying and he was on the phone and he said, let me call you back. And he hung up the phone and he said, stop, brother, stop. He said, it's not too late. He said, what, whatever, wherever you're going, or whatever you're about to do, it's not too late. And he said, could I pray for you? And I was like, for what? For what? He's like, just can I pray for you? And he did. And he, uh, he put his hand on my shoulder. And in that moment, I became weak. And I fell. I fell to my knees. And he, he started praying. And he said, man, you're not, you're not too late. Let me take you somewhere. And he took me to this class called uh, Changes That Heal. And uh, they said, it was like the last 20 minutes of the class. And they said, come next week, come next week, come Sunday, come Sunday, right? And uh, I was like, all right, I'll go. You know, I never knew, never knew that kind of uh, love from strangers. And... I came Sunday, and then I heard the pastor say, give us a year of your life, and I guarantee you, change, you know? And I took that as a challenge, kind of, and uh, I came every day. I came, well, every Sunday and Wednesday I came. I walked for an entire year. I didn't have a job. I was working uh, small, small jobs for cash, like I said, and uh, I came every Sunday, and Wednesday, I walked, uh, rain or shine, I walked to church, and uh, it was it was change that 
I never expected. And uh, about three months prior to that year, uh, the pastor's wife says, hey, bring your uh, bring resumes if you guys are looking for a job. And uh, we're going to pray over them. We're going to just pray so you guys could get a job. And I was like, oh, okay, that's funny. And uh, I was like, all right, I don't have a resume, but I'm going to do it. So I made one and I and we prayed over it. And uh, to make that long story short, I got an interview or I got a call for the job. And I was like, whoa, that it worked, you know? And uh, in my head, I kind of got really excited and I kind of jumped the gun. And, and, and to me, God was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You said you were going to give me a year. Let's finish out that year and let's finish it strong. So I didn't hear a call back for three months up until my year there. And my year was in August. Up until two weeks before that year, I got a call back saying, can you come in for an interview? And it blew me away, the timing of God. It blew me away, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, that, that's the, that's, that's my story of, of depression and suicide. I, I never saw that guy again. I never saw uh, Danny Tienda until about a year later. And it was crazy because uh, we were at a, a baptism at the beach. It was a barbecue thing and everything. And I was talking with a friend of mine. And she said, how did you come to faith? You know, I don't really know your, your story. And I was telling her this story. And as I was telling her, that guy, Danny, was passing by. And I had never seen him. This is a, it's a pretty big church, so we just never ran into each other. And uh, he was passing by and he looked at me and I looked at him. And while telling my story, I couldn't speak anymore. I, I just, I felt my throat go down into my stomach. And he looked at me and he said, you're Israel, huh? I said, yeah. And I just broke down again and we just hugged. He said, man, I've been trying to get in contact, to, contact with you for a long time. Turns out, you know, uh, other people that knew me and knew him, we were just we just didn't, you know, we didn't meet again until that day. And uh, now he's a good friend of mine, and, and we see each other from time to time. And um, other, other other than God intervening, that 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 guy saved my life. I think, you know, if had he not turned the corner at the time he did. I don't think I would be here, you know? And they took my backpack from me, <laughs> did whatever they did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the story of, of where I was with depression and suicide. Wow. What, uh, what keeps you motivated to keep you know, going on other than um, my only answer for that is my son. There's there's plenty of other things that that are involved in my life, but my son overall. And what's scary is that um, it wasn't it wasn't always that you know depression and suicide were so strong that it shadowed my son. Um, and I don't know if. It w if it was because at the time he was a lot younger, but now my son has a he has an, a personality. We talk, I see him cry. Um, there's a lot of me in him that I see, and uh, just just the thought just the thought of him that keeps me going. Just the 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 mental picture of his smile. Um, that keeps me going, you know? Being able to provide for him, um, being able just to hear him speak, um, the thought of being able to watch him grow up, watch him play with his cousins, eventually graduate, eventually get married, those things keep me going. 
you know. Um, depression is not something I deal with now. Of course, people get sad, but I've always promised myself that I would never, um, I would never go backwards like that again, you know. Um, but but mainly my son, my son is what motivates me to keep going, you know. And and of course my family, my close friends, and everything. Um, but overall, it's it's to see to see my son prosper. you ever able to make amends with your ex-wife? Is that still a touchy subject? No. Um, there was a point where where I felt like I had to apologize. And I didn't understand. I never understood why I... F- I felt like I just always had to apologize. I had to I had to um I had to rely on God to give me an answer for that question because I always I always felt like I needed to apologize because I never heard it from her. So in my head I was the only reason for my failures. You know? Um Yeah, I just, I had to, I had to learn, I guess, to, to just apologize once in a way after all those other times um, and to let it go and, and, and to be okay with that, you know? Um, did we make amends? We're cordial. We're cordial for our son, you know, and, and that's... I've known her for a really long time. I've known her since the second grade. Um, and we have a son together, so we're never, ever going to stop talking, you know. And uh, that's that's where it needs to be. We need to be cordial and, and civil with each other and just worry about our son, you know, the well-being of our son and, and um, raising our son, right? Um, I just want to thank you for... You know, it, it, you know, telling your story today. Uh, just to kind of wrap it up, any uh, advice, any words of wisdom for any of the listeners that are watching right now that may be going through this, something like this, or they know someone that's going through something like this and they can share this along? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, like I said before, we have our, our podcast, my partner, partner and I have our uh, podcast where this subject has been coming up a lot. Um, if you're dealing with depression and I think at first it might seem like a joke because you're like I don't think like that so you're not too sure as to why you start thinking these way this way or these things Um, but don't keep them to yourself talk to somebody about it even if it's just a curiosity of why am I sad why am I sad often or why do I have these depressing thoughts just talk about them to somebody you know Um, you don't necessarily if it's if you if you're finding it it's like a the beginning stage you don't necessarily have to seek help and talk to people you know professionals just Maybe talk to your friend or a family member and just ask. And you'd be surprised at how many people are just like you or have these thoughts just like you, you know. Um, don't keep it in. Definitely do not do not keep it in. Um, seek help, you know. And anyone dealing with somebody going through that stuff, do your best to try to understand um, at what level at what level they're in you know Um, and that there's always there's always a way out there's always a way out life is too precious to to end you know yeah 
Thank you.